All right, plan for today. We are going to finish chapter one, finally. And we're going to go over the exercises that were assigned for chapter one. And we're also going to go over your high opinion exercises. So have those ready. You will also hand those in. So exercises for chapter one, high opinion. And we will have a test on Wednesday, day after tomorrow, test on chapter one. Now, it doesn't look like you're freaking out, that's good, because we really did take a long time on this chapter. I believe it was warranted, I think it was worthwhile personally, but it did take a long time, so you should have had considerable time for preparation. So test on chapter one, day after tomorrow, Wednesday. I believe there will be some kind of dictation, possibly compound noun stress circling, and also maybe something with high opinion, so make sure that you know high opinion. Uh, but I won't be too strict the first time because we've just started it. On the other hand, it's not that difficult. I hope we can iron out most of the problems today, if there are any. So, we're going to continue reading in the textbook. Let's get ready. Next reader. Remember to say your name loud and clear, and read loud and clear as well, so we can all hear you, because when I correct one individual's pronunciation, the lesson is for everybody, but if you didn't hear what she said the first time, you don't know what's being corrected. So, reader, please read clearly. Everybody ready? Page 20, go. Go ahead. My name is Joy. Okay, nice and loud. Okay. In summary, the targets for vowel gestures Vowel gestures Good. can be described in terms of three factors. The height of the body of the tongue. All right, so whenever you see in summary, you're really good test takers as good Taiwanese, I know, who made it to Taida. You're good test takers, so when you see in summary, what goes on in your head? What was that? It's important, it's important for a test, right? Remember, you're, you're so good at tests. You're going to be good at other things, too, I hope, before the class is over, at least in terms of uh, English pronunciation and phonetics. So when you see in summary, he's going to tell you some important things, and sometimes, you don't understand everything in the summary. If that happens, what should you do? Because summaries are usually very succinct. Succinct. And Jing Lian. Succinct. S U C C I N C T. Succinct. They're very succinct. And Jing Lian. So sometimes, since they don't give you a lot of background and preparation and explanations, if you don't understand something in a summary, what do you do? Anybody? Annie? If you don't understand something in a summary, what do you do? Go back in the chapter and find out what they were talking about. Maybe it was something that you weren't paying close attention to at the time. That's totally normal. It's normal in reading a book. You read something, suddenly there's, for example, if it's a novel, there's a character and you forgot whose brother this person is or whose husband or whatever. You go back. And then you read and you find out when this person first appeared and then sort things out. Well, that's totally normal because our brain usually learns how to focus. It just pays attention to what's important right now and then we start forgetting background and details. So go back and make your understanding complete as much as you can, especially when you see something in a summary that says, uh, this, these are the main points, but I don't get one of them. All right. So number one is the height of the body of the tongue. First pronunciation, how do we say B-O-D-Y? Is it buddy? Is it buddy? Buddy is a friend, a huoban. He's my buddy. He's my skating buddy, for example. This is a very long ah. Ah is the longest vowel, vowel in American English. Ah. Uh, the schwa is the shortest. I, e, ah are also very short, but ah is the longest. 它是天生的长, so watch out for ah, ah is pretty long too, but ah is the longest. And that is the vowel of body, it's an ah. So it's body, everyone? Body. body of the tongue. Body of the tongue. 
Very good. All right. Note what it says here. The height of the body of the tongue. Now this stuff just sounds kind of dry and technical at this point. But as we get more into phonetics, you're going to understand how important that is. And it's going to relate to something called F1. F1 is formant 1. F-O-R-M-A-N-T. This is a taste of things to come. F-O-R-M-A-N-T. Formant. Formant in Chinese is called gong zhen feng. Gong tong de gong. Zhen dong de zhen. Shan feng de feng. Gong zhen feng. We don't understand it yet, but we'll understand it very soon because they're going to talk about it already in this chapter. This is now the sixth edition and I have taught from all editions except for, well I didn't teach from the second edition, I learned from the second edition. I taught the third, fourth, and fifth and now sixth edition. The only edition I missed was edition one, I was too young then. Okay, so I've taught all of, from almost all of the books and he's made a progression from including more and more acoustic phonetics earlier in the book. That was a conscious decision. He wanted to put more about the physics of sound towards the beginning. And this is like the third edition, second or third edition that he's done that. So you're going to understand some things about physics even without taking second semester. And part, this, this first item in the list, the height of the body of the tongue. This is very important. It creates a resonance in the oral tract, in the vocal tract. 在你的口腔里面，它会产生一种共鸣。那这个共鸣现在不想说，I'm not going to try to explain it all to you now, but I'm telling you, it's going to be important later. It's just like one of those characters that you didn't pay attention to early in the novel, and then all of a sudden, he becomes president or something like that. Like that. Um, so this one's important. The height of the body of the tongue. It looks Technical and boring, it's very important. I'm telling you, it's very important. So memorize this stuff. You don't have to sube sube. If you understand it, you don't have to sube because it just becomes a natural part of your understanding. So first of all, pronunciation body. A lot of you say body, and it's not. It sounds sort of like body, which is British, okay? But it's body in American. Height of the body of the tongue. 舌头的高度. Number one, what are we talking about here? We are describing what? Pay attention to our context. It's easy to just read and then kind of not have the things go in. Vowel, we're describing vowel gestures, right? So number one is how high your tongue is. Now I've spent so much time on this to try to make an impression on you. It's very, very, very important. All right, that's number one. So read that one again, please. Number one, the height of the body of the tongue. Good. Number two, the front back position of the tongue. Good. Pronunciation again. What's wrong? Listen. The front back position. What's wrong? There is a stop at the end of front. Now these stops are serious business. I'm not kidding. When you come to a stop, PTKBDG, stop, stop, just 停下来. You cannot keep going. The from back position, the from back position. Now I'm going to give you a, an example from Minayu. My Minayu is limited. I know a lot of theory. I don't speak it very well, but I know some things. There's one thing I've noticed that may be helpful in understanding what happens in Taiwan English. How do you say ili in Minayu? Ili. Is it right? Li. All right. Now say ili dan. Okay. 那个lip后面是什么音? When you put it in that phrase, 几lip, then 几lip, neng, right? I didn't say it the way I've heard it said. What is, what is the end of lip when you put neng after it? Is it the same? No? What do you have? Louder? Beautiful. You got it. That's exactly what I was after. Can you say it loud and clear for everybody, please? Uh, in Taiwanese? Ili dan, yeah, in Taiwanese. Huh? Okay. It, try it again. Okay. If you say it carefully, it's still going to be a P. But I went to a music a concert not long ago, and they were teaching us one line over and over, so I heard it many times clearly. It's, 哇呜几两能, 哇呜几两能, 
It was really an M. It wasn't a M. It wasn't a M. It was 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 a M. If the P turns to an M, we've got to stop turning into a continuant, a nasal continuant. It's assimilating. Is it the same as the N? Is it the same place of articulation? Is it the same place of articulation as the N? Is it the same place of articulation as the N in N? No. N, how do they go? Place of articulation is in Ali. It's alveolar or dental, yeah, alveolar. And how about lem? Wow, di lem neng. It's bilabial, right? So the place of articulation did not assimilate. What assimilated? 是什么东西被同化，并不是它发音的位置，而是什么 ？The manner of articulation assimilated, didn't it? 就是能 is a continuant, a nasal. 然后本来是 lip. But it turned into lim, so we have an assimilation of place of articulation in Minayu. Now, how do you say mo li hua? Huh? Louder? Huh? Don't be shy. I need to hear it loud and clear. Right. In guys, the k, because the 后面变成一个 ng. 它就变成一个邦邦内 ，it's it's something like that. It's it's like a, 本来是 k, it turns into an ng, it becomes velar. So it happens in Minayu. I don't think it happens all the time, but I know it happens. My point is, if you're doing something like front, back, what's happening there? 很类似，哇呜几两能一样的现象，应该是 t， 可是 t 好像又变成一个 nasal。呃、uh, ，back 在这里也不不是一个 nasal， 可是是类似，就是那个东西不见了。So this isn't the best example for comparison, but for like 茉莉，还有点类似。后面一个 k 变成一个 ng。My point is a stop is turning into a continuant and a nasal here. So please don't do that. The stops are for stopping. You've got to stop. Even if you don't have a t, you need a glottal stop. The front back, but front 还是会有个 t. The front back. Again, I'm spending a lot of time because this is one of the most common errors I hear in Taiwan English. Not stopping, it stops. 碰到 PTK BDG 不当一回事，就这样子连过去，从 wow ji lep neng to wow ji lem neng. But we don't do that in English. We do it in Minayu, but not in English. Everybody got my point? 可以吗 ？Okay, my pronunciation 可能不是很标准 ，but I know because 确实有这个现象 ，and I believe this might be one of the reasons why it happens in Taiwan English. We don't do it in English is native speakers, although there is a time when we do this. It does happen, but for a very special purpose. I may have mentioned it before. It happens in pop music. I just heard it yesterday. I forgot that song, but I remember another example.、Uh, for example, Tori Amos says, "Put my hand in my father's glove." That's a song I really like called "Winter." Put my hand in my father's glove. It's a song that you can go listen to it on YouTube. What should it be? Put my hand in my father's glove. 他就套上他爸爸的手套 I put my hand in my father's glove. But when she sings it, and you can check this one because I know this particular song, although it happens in many songs, especially in Motown kinds of song, 就是那个美国黑人的歌可能特别多，可是白人一样，反正白人唱歌也是模仿黑人 Okay, so. Put my hand. Put my hand. That's the same thing. From back. So it's a young double in T. Not stopping it stops. But why do we do it in pop music? And they're native speakers, so they're doing it on purpose, sort of. They're not probably really aware of exactly what they're doing, but they hear the effect of what they're doing. Anybody have an opinion about why this happens only, as far as I know, only in pop music? Instead of put my hand in my father's glove, put my hand in my father's glove. Anybody have an idea why that happens in pop music sung by native speakers? 
because I keep bugging you to stop at stops, but those singers are not stopping at stops. But they don't do it all the time. They do it sometimes. Any opinions? Any, any guesses? Yong Yue Yidian, Sorry? Sorry? They're singing faster? Sometimes they lengthen it. That's a good guess. Thank you for, you know. Okay, so one guess was because they're singing fast, so they rush over it. But that's when we don't do it. Normally when we speak fast, we still put the stops in. How da you glottal stops in nadi? The second one is so we can keep singing because if we have a T, we have no voicing, right? To keep up the voice that we hear, you can't really lengthen consonants in singing, or at least not stops. So uh, when you're singing, when you want to lengthen a note, what do you lengthen, the vowel or the consonant? The vowel is what you lengthen, right? You can lengthen the nasal, and I hear that done, for example, in Taiwanese songs. Sometimes, but your choir director, at least in my experience, will always tell you, lengthen the vowel, don't lengthen the consonant. So that's an idea, but we still need that stop there normally. So that, that was a good thought. Any more ideas? Why that might happen? Why do we do anything? when we're singing pop songs. How do, how do pop, pop singers want us to feel about them? That they're nerdy or cool? Right, do we like nerdy singers? Not that much, we like cool singers, right? Cool singers who exude power. They act like they're very powerful and graceful and attractive, et cetera, right? That's what we like in, in pop singers or any kind of star. So, this is a stylistic kind of uh, addition of, uh, to their singing. This is kind of something done for style. So I thought about this a long time. In fact, a student many years ago wrote a whole paper about it. Ah, he's doing very well, by the way. OK, he wrote a paper about this. It's to sound cooler. So I'm a pop singer. I can say, put my hand in. Right, but you guys are not pop singers in this class, right? Maybe outside class you are. <laughs> Remember to stop at stops. A lot of time on this because when you're reading, please read ahead. Mark things that you're probably going to forget. We call that text markup. So how do we say this? The front back position is not from back. Not from back. It's front back. Everybody try the front back position. The front back position. The front back position. The front back position. Not position. 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 S is pronounced as Z. And then the vowel is I, not E. Position. Position. Everyone? Position. Beautiful. The front Back position. position. Beautiful, that's really good. And do you also notice that long pause after the K before the P? PTK back It's going to be really, really a long pause. So the front back position. I'm being dramatic. The front Back position. Try it. That sounds totally native. That sounds totally native. That's the way we do it. Reminder, PTK home in. See the stop. All right. Have you all read article number seven in the series? Okay, maybe it's good, it would be good to read it again. After this long, long reminder I've given you. Take it seriously because if I have to remind you every single time, you can start reminding yourself and not be nagged. All right? Let's try number two again. Number two, the front back position of the tongue. Beautiful. All right. Now, I said that the first thing was really important. What was the first thing again without looking at the book? Height of the tongue. Good. Number two is? And can you give me an example among the vowels that shows a contrast between a front vowel and a back vowel? 
For example, the highest one would be E and then U, right. Although the U is higher or lower than the E? Because? Because the shape of our bones and our jaw and our joint here means we have a triangle here. That means things can be higher here but not so high in the back. Is that right? So, U is not going to be so high, but they're both classified as high vowels. This is 相对的,它会最靠近上颚就对了. So, that's really important. Number one is E versus A. E is high, A is low. Number two is front versus back. E is high, I'm sorry, E is front and U is back. So that's number two. Okay, and that's also formant two, F2, F2, formant, gong zhen feng, this is the arga. Then number three is? Number three, the degree of lip rounding. Beautiful, all right, no pronunciation correction here. The degree of lip rounding, this is the third, 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 this is the third. Number one, height of the tongue. Number two, how front or how back the tongue is. Number three, the degree of? Lip rounding, good, good pra stop practice for stops as well. So, <coughs> for example, give me an example of a high, high uh, vowel with lip rounding. Ooh, that we were just talking about. What's another one? Let's just go down. Ooh is one. Going down, we have uh. uh. And then we have. Ah, in American, that's also rounded. We didn't put O in there. O or O. Actually, it's a diphthong. So, U, U, O. So, the way don't, because the nigga is home, and the other is the O. Then we have A. And then below that, things unround. Is A ah is our lowest back vowel, is that rounded? No, but in British English, they do have a lower back, somewhat rounded vowel. 就是哦,那个是倒过来的,那个A,是大母音A,把它那个颠倒过来,那个符号. We're going to learn about that soon. For example, P-O-T in British English is pot. It's, it's not pot. Pot是那个开口, O. Okay, I'm not really good at these vowels. My teachers corrected me many times. Because the 大字, 开口, O is the remember? It's a long vowel. And that's P-O-R-T, port in American, port in British. P-O-T is pot. Pot, 没有那么远,舌头比较低. Everybody, pot. Pot. Okay, it's, I'm not a good model, but this gives you an idea of how it works. Okay, so we have less and less rounding the further down we go. U is the most rounded, U is less rounded. U is even less rounded in American English than it is in British English. All right, I'll clear on those three big points about how uh, we describe the vowel gestures to make vowels, and what the important um, parameters are, okay? The relative positions of the highest, highest points of the tongue are given... Highest points? Highest points of the tongue are given in figure 1.13. Okay, that's fine, but I'm going to be picky. In Taiwan English, a lot of people say oi. Points. All tight tongue. Look. Do the all yao duan. Points. Points. All right. So look at 1.13, top of the next page. Those are the approximate highest points of the tongue in producing these seven vowels. Say just the vowels and the words given in the figure. All right. Uh, oh, go ahead. Given in the figure caption, and check. Figure caption. Figure caption. Figure caption. Figure caption. You have to go up because we're not done. Continuation rise. Figure caption. Figure caption. Right. And check that your tongue. Tongue. Your tongue moves in the pattern described by the points. All right. Let's just go through that one more time. Look at the vowels in. The words listed 
for figure 1.13, don't say heed, just say e, and then look at the point in this figure and then feel what your tongue is doing. We want to uh, increase your ability to feel exactly what you are doing. Okay, so the vowels are, go, e, i, you don't have to wait for me, do it yourself, go. E, I, I, a, a, u, u. So did you feel your tongue making a kind of U shape inside your mouth? Okay. It is very difficult to become aware of the position of the tongue in vowels. In vowels, in watch vowels, your continuation, right? But you can probably get some impression of tongue height by observing the position of your jaw. 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 Right. While saying just the vowels in the four words: heat, hit, head, head. You should also be able to also also be oh, able oh, also also yeah. Be able to feel the difference. Feel. Feel the difference between front and back vowels. By vowels. Vowels. Right. By contrasting words such as he and who. All right, everybody. He. he. Who. He. Say them back and forth a few times to feel your tongue moving front to back, back to front. He. Who. He. Who. Okay. Say these words silently and concentrate on the sensations involved. You should involved. Involved. Yeah, that's longer. Nigga si yo sheng de. And what's involved? Involved. Involved. Everyone? Involved. Yeah, I bet a lot of you would just look at it and say involved, right? Involved. Involved. Jia voicing, na hong muin tang. Go on. You should feel the tongue going from front to back as you say he, who. You can, you can also feel your lips becoming more rounded. Beautiful. Beautiful reading. I was very, very picky. Thank you. Next. I'm Karen. As you can see from figure 1.13. Figure. Figure. Not fi. Fi. Figure. Uh-huh. 1.13. Mm. The specification of vowels in terms of the position of the highest point of the tongue is not entirely satisfactory for a number of reasons. First, the vowels classified as high do not have the same tongue tongue height. The back vowel is nowhere mm -hmm. The okay. back, high, mm -hmm. back high vowel is nowhere near as high as the front vowel. Yeah, they're telling you to look at point 0.7 and then point 0.1. Second, the so-called the so the so back vowels vary considerably in their degree of backness. Third, as you can see by looking at figure 1.12, this kind of subsequent Specification disregards considerable differences in the shape of the tongue in front vowels and in back vowels. Nor does it take into account the width of the far pharynx, which, con which varies considerably and is not entirely dependent on the height of the tongue in different vowels. We will discuss better ways of describing vowels in chapters 4 and 9. Good. Very nice reading. Chap look at my mouth. Chapters. Chapters. Yeah. Watch out that you don't say and you have to look at my mouth to know what I'm talking about. Don't say chapters. Because in Taiwan, you've learned lip rounding for sh and ch. But it shouldn't be so round. Chapters, not chapters. Children should be children. So, kai lang dian. Everybody, chapters. And let's go over the main points to make sure we got it. As we keep saying, trying to describe vowels articulatorily is not very accurate or very, very efficient or useful. So if we want to make an articulatory description of vowels, we're going to run into problems. And they give you three reasons. Number one, we've already mentioned them. The high vowels are not equally the high vowels, like e and u, are not equally high. 
Though it tells what gao, but they're not the same height. One is much lower than the other. Number one. Number two. The back vowels are not, are not equally. All right, so that's nice and, and symmetrical. The high vowels are not equally high, and the back vowels are not equally back, right? For example, it looks like which one is more back than which one? What vowel is that? Ua looks like it's more back than? Uh, then ah, that's right, but we're talking about rounded vowels. Well, no, we're not. We're just talking about back vowels. Yes, it's more back than ah, you're right, and also more back than u. So u seems to be more back than either u or ah. All right, so that's number two, and then what's the third consideration? If you look at figure 1.12 on the preceding page, they're saying that we have many different shapes of the Tongue, right, but we're not considering that. The shape of the tongue varies a lot in front vowels and in back vowels. So there are big differences, but we're not even mentioning those. In addition, yan bi, hou mian de yan bi, ta ye ke yi hen kuan, ye ke yi hen zai, ke yi hen jin, ye ke yi bi jiao song yi dian. We're not mentioning those either. The width of the pharynx, just the hou mian de yan bi de kuan du ye mei you ti. So those are four reasons why using an articulatory description of vowels is not very satisfactory. It says we're going to discuss better ways in future chapters, and those better ways, what are, what are they talking about? We're going to use acoustic and, articul and, and, sorry, acoustic and auditory phonetics, mainly acoustic phonetics, to give a much better description of where the tongue is highest to produce vowels. Very good. The sounds of vowels next. Go on. I'm Tina. Okay. The sounds of vowels. Say it one more time. The sounds of vowels. Good. Studying the sounds of vowels requires a greater knowledge of acoustic than we can handle at this stage of knowledge the book. Knowledge of what? Acoustics. Yeah. That's the second time I've noticed you seem to have dropped an S. Everybody pay special attention to final S's. Many, many students leave off the final S's because when it goes through your Taiwan grammar filter, you often strip off all number. Okay, 到底是单数复数，通通都被被被刮除了，没有了。So watch those final s's. And it's not just Taiwanese. I had a former student from Germany, and he was not a Hua Chao. He was just an ordinary German. He did the same thing, and they have plurals in German. So it's not just Taiwanese. If that makes you feel better. Okay, go on. We can, however. Note some comparatively straightforward facts. Straight, Stra straight, mm -hmm. straightforward facts about vowel sounds. Vowels, like all sounds, like except all, was all, 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 mm -hmm. like all sounds, except the pure tone of a tiny fork. Too ru, tuning, tuning is a tuning, using the in cha, in cha is a tuning fork. 注意那个重音 Everybody, tuning fork. I don't say tuning, and in British they don't do they don't say tuning either. They say tuning. 它会变成一个什么音？本来是 tuning， 音是是 tuning， 可是它不念 tuning， 它念 tuning. What happened? What do we call that? It was a stop, and it became an affricate. Right? It became affricated. It became affricated. 就是色差音化 That's what happens in British English. They say tuning rather than tuning or do. In American, in British, not do they say do, do d u e do. So, uh, English 已经变色差音，不太有人会讲 do 跟 tuning， 那个是比较少见的发音。要不然是 tuning， 那要不然是 tuning。那每次有人说 tuning， 可是听起来好像有点太，嗯，就是太太正式。Okay. Uh, tuning fork. A tuning fork has a pure tone. Not completely, because it has some weird, strange, and bizarre sounds. It is not completely empty. But in general, the sound coming out is only a sine wave. Only a sine wave. One sound, one pitch, very pure. One single pitch. That's a tuning fork. Okay. 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 We can think of them as containing, contain, containing, mm -mm. 
Tay Ten. No. Ten. 那个 n 不要去想。Tay Ten. n 去掉。T A Y 怎么念 ？T A Y. Tay. Yeah. Containing. Containing. No. 你 n 要去掉。Con. Con 不是 con. 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 N 点的 n con. Con 木头 con. Con. Tay. Con. Ten. 你你那个 n 想都不要想。Contain, contain. You're thinking of the n. N 完全把它忘掉 Contain, contain. Okay, the t is good. Con 不是 con 是 con, con, containing. Hey, containing. Right. Everybody try that. 很不习惯 right? But it's correct now. It's perfectly correct. 这是没有那个完那个完，这是完美完美无缺的。All right, containing, containing, containing. Yeah, okay. Try it again. Containing. There we go. A number of 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 yeah. Different pitches. 不是 different, different, different. Right. 嗯，只有两个音节 different, different. Right. Pitches simultaneously. There is a pitch at which the vowels is actually spoken, the, uh -huh. which depends on the pause, pauses being produced by the vibrating vocal folds. All right, so that's number one. 他这里讲的一些东西，你目前可能没有基础来完全了解。你现在就把它听过去，写些笔记，想一想。可是没有完全消化，没有关系。I just want you to have an impression. 你有印象就够了。因为之后会说，哎 ，Remember that time when we said， 然后说 ，Oh， that's what it meant。啊 ，I get it。今天还不是 I get it 的时候，今天就是留个印象就可以了。When we ping a tuning fork， we get a pure pitch。嗯 ，just one pitch。But the voice is not like a tuning fork。It has many pitches at the same time。有些人讲话跟唱歌的声音很醇厚 ，Is that right？ It's because actually we have many many pitches sounding at the same time in our voice. I'll explain how it works in the future. Right now, just keep in mind that the voice is different from a tuning fork. The tuning fork gives us one simple sine wave, one simple pitch, but the human voice gives us many many sounds, many different pitches at the same time, and that's what we're going to use to describe vowels. So keep going. And quite separate from this. There are overtone pitches that depend on the shape of the resonating cavity of the vocal tract. All right. So what they're saying is that the the pitch at which the vowel is actually spoken that's called the fundamental frequency. 给你们一个术语 fundamental frequency, 基频基本频率 in Chinese 基本频率 but nobody says that we say 基频基本的频率 You all know how to write pin, right? I find some funny Chinese、uh, characters sometimes in your writing, like 色音。色音有时候是尖色的色。啊、oh, ，有一个人写了 ，So watch out. 色音是塞子的塞，不是不是苦涩的涩。All right. So the pitch at which the vowel is actually spoken, they're talking about the rate of vibration of the vocal folds. 这个是一个定义哦。低频的定义是什么？就是你的声带震动的速率。That's 低频。That is the sound that our ears hear most clearly. 我们听到一个人的声音，呃，我们要在钢琴找到那个音在哪里，那个音就是它的基频，就是它声带震动的速率 ，the rate of vibration of the vocal folds. Got it? Okay, that's one. But he says 那个之外呢，还有其他的东西叫背音。背音 ，if you know music, you'll understand it. But if my voice is at a hundred Hertz, for example,、uh, if my voice is at a hundred hertz, then we have many sounds that are divided into two, into three, into four. There are other sounds that are divided into two, into three, into four, into five, into six, into seven, into eight, into nine, into ten, into eleven, into twelve, into thirteen, into fourteen, into fifteen, into sixteen, into seventeen, into eighteen, into nineteen, into twenty, into twenty-one, into twenty-two, into twenty-three, into twenty-four, into twenty-five, into twenty-six, into twenty-seven, into twenty-eight, into twenty-nine, into twenty-ten, into twenty-eleven, into twenty-twelve, into twenty-thirteen, into twenty-fourteen, into twenty-fifteen, into twenty-sixteen, into twenty-seventeen, into twenty-eighteen, into twenty-nineteen, into twenty-twenty, into twenty-twenty-one, into twenty-two, into twenty-three, into twenty-four, into twenty-five, into twenty-six, into twenty-seven, into twenty-eight, into twenty-nine, into twenty-ten, into twenty-eleven, into twenty-twelve, into twenty 我们人就是讲话，把我会有个基频之外，还有很多背音，背音是听不清楚，可是有。然后呢，进到口腔里面会有一些共鸣。Remember when I demonstrated 
My voice sounds one way like this and a different way like this. Now my voice sounds different, is that right? 那是因为我这边我就临时做了一个共鸣箱它就产生一个特别的共鸣 So you hear a different, different pitch, a different quality That's what they're talking about 母音就是这些共鸣产生的 Now I'll explain it in more detail another day But if you understand that much, you're doing very well Let's go on These overtone pitches Oh, 不是 all, 是 o all, all. Right Overtone pitches Good. give the vowels its distinctive quality we will enlarge on this notion in chapter 8. Here we will consider briefly how the how one vowels how is, one vowel how one vowels mm -mm. is how, how how one vowel is nigga is how one vowels mm -mm. No, S. Oh. how one vowel is distinguished from one another is what is, is distinguished from another by the pitches of pause, the pause, pause, just to see. How uh, one vowel is distinguished from another. From uh, how one vowel is distinguished from another. From from yeah another by the pitches of the overtones. Good of the of 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 the overtones. Very good. Actually, you read beautifully too, and I was being really picky. But in the pickiness, I hope you're learning something. So. 不同的vowel,它可能有一样的基频, but可能是产生共鸣的那个空间, it might be big or it might be small. 然后它的音都会有变, 就看这个共鸣箱的那个形状跟大小, 很小的话, 那个pitch会比较高还是比较低? 很大的话,pitch比较高还是比较低? 低, right, you know that, so 很小的话就, so that's what we're doing in our mouth. We will create many different sizes, different shapes, and different sizes. Let the sound and the All right, that's complicated. If you didn't get it, it's okay. Tingguo, yi the whole man ting the shihao, hui yue la yue shou xi. Let's go on. I'm Miranda. Okay. <coughs> Normally, one cannot hear the separate over the, the, the mm -hmm. separate overtones of a vowel as distinguishable pitches. All right, separate, separate. She don't see the earth younger in here, everyone separate. Don't see the sanga in here, eight the way. Separate, 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 separate. There we go. The only the only sensation of pitch is the note on which the vowel is set. Said. Said, which depends on the rate of vibration of the vocal folds. But there are circumstances in which the overtones, the? Of, the overtones of each vowel can be heard. Try saying just the vowels in the words heed, hit, had, had, hot, hold, hard. Hard, hood, 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 hood. Very good. All right. And he says we we should make them all long vowels. Now just say the vowels because he hasn't taught IPA yet. That's why he keeps using words and tells you to just pick out the vowels. So this is just e i e a a a u u. And we want to make all of them long. Let's do that first. Follow his instructions, starting with e. E I E A A O U U. All right. We've just gone through the series. We're going to do it again, but this time we're going to whisper. Now, just take a minute and think about what we're doing. When we whisper. We're only going to be using one of the resonance cavities in our mouth. whispering. So we're going to hear different pitches. When we say e, 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 we can hear they're all the same pitch, is that right? But when we whisper, we're going to hear different pitches. So, I will do it first, and then I want you to try it. So, I'll try it with a microphone, so maybe you can hear it more clearly. 
Whispering now. Oh, that was an ah, it should have been an uh. All right, let's listen again one more time. Do you hear a pitch? That's got its own pitch. Okay, but it's also very complex. So, listen to the difference between E and I. Can you hear a high and a low? Which one's higher? E is higher, right? So let's see, our, see if we can hear the pitch going down as our mouth gets bigger to make the ah. Listen. You have to be very quiet. We hear that clearly. Which one's higher? All right, and this is a good point to make because in Taiwan English, do we sometimes have a problem with e and a, like bet and bat, right? Many of my students have trouble with bet and bat, bed, bad. But if you whisper them, you can hear a big difference in pitch. So, e to e, we already heard, heard. let's hear e to e again. Which one's higher? I. All right, now E to A again, listen. Okay. Which one's higher? E is higher. So if you're having trouble with E and A, here's one difference. Whisper them. A should be much lower. Okay? Bet, bat, if you're having trouble. And some people I know still do have trouble. All right, let's go to ah. Let's go ah to ah. Lower or higher? Is it going down or up? Is it going down or up? It's going down still because the kochang is getting bigger and bigger. It's going way down. All right, from ah to u, uh, let's try that. Is it going down or up? My mouth is getting smaller because it's a higher vowel. Is that going up or down? It's going down still. Now, my tongue is going higher, so you'd expect it to go higher because it, for example, is higher than e, right? But it's still going lower. Why is that? Anybody know? The tongue is going back, and it's making even more space in the vocal tract. 口腔就是舌头前的那个空间越来越大。我们 Whisper的时候，听到那个口腔的共鸣，它越来越大，因为舌头往后退，然后就让那个空间变得更大了。I'm repeating myself. So for 前面就是舌头上面的空间是不是很小？Just say whisper. All right. Now say. 有没有觉得舌头上面的空间变很很很开阔了？Is that right? That's F1, I think it's F1, all right, or F2, I'm sorry, I get them mixed up. So, uh, nigga, we've got a much lower sound. And then how about for U? Let's go from U to U. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's still going lower. Is that right? So we're making that 
cavity in our mouth bigger and bigger and bigger. So we tend on the gongming hui yue lai yue di. Let's go backwards from u to e. So All right, everybody try it. Forwards from E to U and then backwards. Go. Whisper. Start with U and go to E. You're going up the scale, right? It's not precise. It's not do re mi. But you're going higher and higher. Everybody can feel that now. All right, I want to keep this going. So we finished the thought. That's what's happening. Mm. Let's continue. Now whisper these vowels. When you now whisper these vowels. Now whisper these vowels. Good. When you whisper. You be a When you whisper, Good. the vowel. The vocal folds are not vibrating. Vibrating. Vibrating, and there is no regular pitch of the voice. Mm -hmm. Never the, 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 the right. voice. Nevertheless, you can hear that this set of vowels forms a series of sounds on a continuous. Sounds pause. Sounds on a continuously descending pitch. Mm -hmm. What you are hearing corresponds to a group of overtones that characterize the vowels. These overtones are highest for the vowel in heat and lowest for the vowel in either. 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 How? Right. Hod. Everyone, hod. Hod. Good. Hod, who, hood, hood. Mm -hmm. hood, or who. Good. Which of the three? Which, not which. Which? Which, which of the three vowels is the lowest? Is the. Is the lowest mm -hmm. depends on your regional accent. Mm. Re. Regional accent. Mm -hmm. Accents of English differ. Pause. After the, the complete subject, remember to pause. Accents of English differ slightly in the pronunciation of these vowels. These vowels. Of these vowels. Mm -hmm. Of these vowels. Of these vowels. Of these. Of these vowels. vowels. There we go. You can hear Peter Lagerfogel whispering these vowels. Hmm? <laughs> whispering, whispering these vowels. Whispering these vowels on the CD. Okay, so we don't have um, the CD ready. I'll get it ready during break. We're gonna stop there. So we've been talking about F2. Now I keep mixing up F2 and F1. This is F2. This is the second formant. We're gonna talk about the first formant later. The, the second formant is easier to hear. We, we heard it now. The pitch starts high for E, gets lower and lower all the way to U, even though U is higher, but it's more back. So everybody's clear about the whisper formant now? That's it, we're gonna take a break. We have now seen that if we whisper, and this gives us form in two, F2, that it can give us different pitches for all the vowels. And they start very high, and they go very low as we go from E down to A, from A back up to U. So that's form in two that we're hearing with whispering. And I didn't get the CD out, I'm sorry. So we'll just have to trust our own uh, experience. How about if you try it again? Let's go from E to A, A to U, whispering. All right, you try it. All right, go backwards from U. How high? Okay, so E, we're at our highest. Is that right? Now that's the second format. Mm, let's continue with the next paragraph. Mm, I'm Ruby. There is another way to produce something similar to this whispered pitch. Try whistling a very high note and then the lowest note that you can. All right, we're going to try whistling. And whistling actually gives us the same results as whispering. They sound similar, don't they? So if we whistle, we will get the same kind of 
progression of pitches as we get by whispering. Because we're using the same resonance space to produce whistling as we use for whispering. So keep going. You will find that for the high note, you have to have your tongue in a position for the vowel in heat. And for the low note, your tongue is in the position for one of position. Um, in the position right. for one of the vowels in hot, hood, hood. Right, okay. So I'm not really a good whistler. I whistle a little better sucking in than I do blowing out. But everybody try to whistle a very high note. You know? 吹口哨,吹最高的一个音 <laughs> Okay, so feel what your tongue is doing. All right, get your tongue in that position to, to whistle that very high note again, and now put your tongue in the position to whistle a very low note. 就吹你能吹的最低的一个音 Now go back and forth between your high and your low whistled note and feel what your tongue is doing. 从很高到最低,能吹口哨的那个音 Sounds like a science fiction movie, <laughs> doesn't it? Can you feel what your tongue is doing? It's going lower to make that low sound, right? So this is what we're doing when we're doing the e, i, e, e. It's the same thing. So, in addition to whispering, you can use whistling to find that format. Okay. So let's keep going. From this, it seems as if there is some kind of high pitch associated with a high front vowel in heat and a low pitch associated with one of the back vowels. All right. And in Chinese phonology, they have a they have two categories of E sounds and O sounds, and they use hong, xi. Hong is hong da hong, xi is xi xiao de xi. So some people believe that very often we have sound symbolism. Yong E like that, but hen xiao hen xiao de dong xi. Tiny, tiny, tiny. Big, big. Okay. So big is a good E. That's really, this this theory, can it be proved? Some people have argued. But the point is, E. 感觉好像很小,然后宏大,哦,哦,我们就觉得很大. And that's because of F2, 我们刚刚找到的那个 pitch, 对不对? Because if the pitch is lower, then the person speaking is probably bigger, right? A big guy is going to usually have a low voice. And a real tiny girl will have a very high voice. So, 你看那个声音大小,你大概可以判断那个人,他的身体有多大. Okay. The lowest whistle note corresponds to the tongue and lip gestures very much like those used for the vowel in hu. A good way to learn how to make a high back vowel is to whistle your lowest note possible and then add voicing. So if you want to make a really high back vowel, then try to whistle a very, very low note and then just make noise. So Try it. Whistle a low note, and then just voice. Make a vo vo make a voicing sound. Ooh. You have a very back high vowel. All right. So now you see the connection between whispering and whistling, and F two. This this pitch that we hear. One of the pitches we hear associated with vowels. Let's go on. I'm Annie. Another way of minimizing the sound of the vocal vibrations is to say the vowels in a very low, creaky voice. It is easiest to produce this kind of voice with a vowel such as that in hat or hot. Some people can predict hard. Hard. It's it's long. Ah. Ah. Hard. Hard. Mm -hmm. Some people can produce a creaky voice sound in which the rate of vibration of the vocal folds is so low you can hear the individual pulsations. All right, so we've just found two, method, two methods for listening to F2. Now we're going to find the first form at F1. And we can do that not by whistling or whispering, which uses the front part of the mouth. We're going to use something that uses the lower part of the vocal tract. 
比较低的地方，因为我们要知道，舌头拱起来的地方的后面的那个空间，我们原来原来现在在，嗯，在试听的都是舌头前面的那个空间变得越来越大 ，right？ 我们现在要听舌头后面的那个空间，那个是 F1。Now we can find F1 前面的那些 whispering 跟那个 whistling 是不管用。我们会用 creaky voice, and this is something that I think all of us used to do for fun when we were kids. I know I did, and I've asked other classes. When you were kids, did you sometimes make a sound for fun? <laughs> okay, that's creaky voice. That's how you make a creaky voice, and the creaky voice will help us hear the pitches of F1, the first format. So everybody, first try to make that creaky voice any old way. This is very slow vibration of the vocal folds. It is so slow, we can count how many times that we hear a vibration in one second. We can count how many times that we hear a vibration in one second. We can count how many times that we hear a vibration in one second. We can count how many times that we hear a vibration in one second. So we can now try making different. Vowels, and then we're going to hear the pitch of F1 that way. So let's try first of all. What does he、uh, recommend for us? He says which ones are kind of easier? Had or had, right? Ah and a are easier because they're low vowels. So let's just try ah. That's an easy one. Say ah and then use a creaky voice. Ah. All right. Now say a with a creaky voice. Now go back and forth. Which one's higher? Okay, we can do that with the other vowels. Next paragraph.、Um, Vivian, try saying just the vowels in head, 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 in a creak, in a creak, in a creaky voice. Everybody understands what a creak is, right? It's the sound that a door makes when it's not been oiled. Okay. And you should be able to hear a change in pitch. Change. A change. No. A、um, change. No. We practiced this one, didn't we? Remember, when you're having trouble with that a vowel before a nasal, get rid of the nasal. Just forget about the nasal and say c h a y c h a y. Everyone, c h a y. c h a y. Just totally forget about the nasal. Worry about the nasal later. Say c h a y and then z. Change. Change. Okay. Change. No, you're thinking about the nasal. The nasal part won't do. Change. Change. No, no. Stop speaking English first of all, and then stop thinking about the nasal. 后面的根本就忘掉，只有 t a e, right? Didn't I write it on the board before? You can write it in Zhuyin Fu, ha. Ch, a, e. That's what I want you to say. No n, no j. Chai. Yeah, perfect, perfect. It's exactly what we want. Everybody say it. Chai. Again. Chai. All right. When you're done with chai, when you're saying chai, don't think about nj because you will always get the vowel wrong. Always. Why? Because of habit. You've got this gunsen di gu the habit. You've been doing it for many many years. So as soon as you see the word change, you're gonna do something weird with the vowel. From my point of view, you're going to say change, change. But forget about the nj and say che. Try. Che. There we go. And 不要去想，你先把che 念好。Uh, che. No, I said forget about the nj. 那个 nj 不要念，只要念念这个。Che. 后面不要。Che. 只要念这个就可以。这样就可以。Che. Yeah. yeah, say it five times. Che. 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 All right. Now say it one more time. 然后讲完了，你才想到 nasal. Okay. That's it. You got it. Oh, and thank you. In um, although in one sense the pitch of all of them is just that that of the low creaky voice. When saying the vowels in in the order in the in the order in the o in the order order, but not odor. Everybody, odor is a toe way. Order. Order. Yeah. Okay. In the order, heat, heat. Had had, 
you, you, you can hear a sound that steadily increases in pitch by approximately equal steps with each vowel. All right, we're going to do the same thing again, but we're going to hear a different progression of pitches when we're whispering or whistling, going from E to A, the pitch got higher or, low, or lower. When we are whispering, the pitch got higher or, or lower from E to A. Lower, right? Now let's try doing it with a creaky voice. See what happens. Start with E and go to A. Go ahead with E. And go backwards from A to E. Can you hear it going down? From A to E, it's going down. I think it's easier to hear it going down than it is going up. So now we're going to hear it. We're going to hear it getting higher, going down. Okay. So if you're going from A to E, E was originally higher, A was originally lower. Now it's reversed. E is going to be lower, A is going to be higher. So let's try from E to A again. Listen to the pitch going up. E. Backwards. going way, way down. All right, that's F1. That's the first format. We need these two different pitches coming together to make a vowel. That's what makes a vowel. Those two pitches is what makes a vowel. This is really important. When you learn all the physics of it, you'll get really excited. You think, oh my gosh, that's what a vowel is. I never knew that. But I'm telling you now, before second semester, it's those two pitches, the whisper pitch in the front, the creaky voice in the back. Those two pitches, F1 plus F2, creaky F1, Whisper F2, together they make a vowel. Actually, there are more. There are more, but those are the two most important ones. We also have rounding, and that comes mostly in F3. But F3 is not just rounding. All right, so let's continue. Now set the vowels in hard uh, hood, hood in, a, in a creaky voice. These three vowels have overtones with a steadily decreasing pitch. All right, so if we're going from A to U to U, the pitch should be going higher or lower? Lower because from the beginning to the head, the pitch is going to be higher and lower. So it's going to be higher. Let's try those in a creaky voice. From A to U to U. Go. You can hear it going lower? Start with U and go to A. getting higher. Right? Isn't that cool? Actually, there's another way that you can hear the creaky voice pitch. The creaky voice is the easier way to do it. There's another way and you can flick your, your throat here, but it hurts. So I don't recommend it, but that's another way to get the pitch. So for example, Can you hear the difference in pitch? You can try it yourself. It hurts a little bit, though. Don't hurt yourself. And by the way, Jamie was saying, uh, Ms. Chung, didn't you tell us that whispering is very bad for our voice? It's true. What they really recommend against is That's not so good for your voice. OK. Um, so by flicking your throat, Make a vowel, flick your throat. You can hear F1, just like you can with a creaky voice. Creaky voice is easier, but that's another way to do it. You're just making that space resonate. OK, mm, let's continue. You can hear Peter Ladderforge saying the vowels in the words heat, hit, head, head, heart, heart, hood, hood. Oh, that was beautiful. That was good. <laughs> okay. In his British accent on the CD. And on, uh -huh. on the CD. Yeah. The first four of these vowels have a these, these, these vowels uh -huh. have a quality that clearly goes up in pitch and the last four have a declining pitch. Okay, I don't have it ready now, but we've already demonstrated ourselves. Listen to it yourself on the CD. Put a little check there. Listen to the C D yourself. You've got the C D. Next reader. I'm Bella. In summary, 
Vowel sounds may be set on a variety of notes, voice pitches, but they are distinguished from one but another. They, not but, they, but, they. but they are distinguished from one another by two characteristic vocal tract pitches associated with their uh, with their overtones. And we call those two different pitches formants. 那两个音，它的名称就是共振风 formants. F O R M A N T J S. F O R M A N T S formants 共振风 Those are those two kinds of pitches that we can elicit going in opposite directions, at least sometimes,、uh, to make vowels. Okay. One of them, actually the higher of the two, goes downward throughout most of the series. Heat, hit, head, hat, hot, hot, hood, hood, and correspondence. And corresponds roughly to the difference between front and back vowels. All right. So when we're doing this e i a stuff, it can let us distinguish between front and back vowels. Okay. The other is low for vowels in which the tone position is high, and high for vowels in which the tone position is low. It corresponds inversely to what we call. Vowel height in articulatory terms. All right, so F1, the creaky formant, is about height, 就是舌头的高度 F2 is about front back. 可是不是很准 This is just a 蛮粗略的一个分法 Okay. These characteristic overtones are called the formants of the vowels. Formants. Formants. Right. Formants of the vowels. The one with the lower pitch. Distinguishable in creaky voice, creaky, creaky,、right? creaky voice, being called the first formant and the higher one, the one heard when whispering, the second formant. All right. So the first formant is associated with tongue height, and that's the creaky formant. The second formant is associated with front back. Okay, and that is the whisper and whistle formant. Go on. Julia, the notion of a formant, actually the second formant, distinguishing vowels, has been known for a long time.、Mm -hmm. Known. Known. Not known. No o o o o o known. Known. Uh huh. In a long time. A long time. Right. It was. It was. It was observed. 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 Everybody mark that s. It's a z. Observed. Observed. It And was this one's a Z too. It was observed by Isaac Newton,、mm -hmm. who, in about 1665, wrote in his notebook, "The feeling of a feeling, the feeling of a very deep flagon,、mm -hmm. with a constant stream of a of beer or water sounds." Water. Pause. Water. Oh, water. Sounds it sounds the sounds the make it Jesus the yeah sounds the vowels in this order. All right, here are the symbols, and then he explains it next. So you don't have to read the symbols. Go on. He was about twelve years old at the time. The symbols symbols the symbols not symbols 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 right short. The symbols used here are used here. Used here、uh -huh. are the best matches. Not best, best, best.、Uh -huh. Are the best matches. 嗯，你还是说 best, best. 那下个不要动 best. Are the best、yeah. matches、okay. to the letters in Newton's letters. Letters. 你还是那个 n 念 a 的问题，所以你的下颚要训练它不动 Letters, letters. Yeah. To the letters. Yeah. Okay. In Newton's handwriting, 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 in his notebook, notebook, notebook,、mm -hmm. which is in the British Museum. So if you go to London, go visit Newton's diary. Okay, yeah, I went to visit at the time Canterbury Tales. I think they have the the show gal of that、um, there. But this would be a good thing, you know, good, a good goal for you if you're in London to go and visit this. They probably refer to the vowels in words such as "wu wu." Wu is 追求女孩子呀，跟她谈情说爱
Hoot. Hoot. No, yeah, hoot. Woo, I'll read them. Woo, hoot, foot, coat, cat, bait, be, ye. Ye is Niman. Right? Go on. Fill a deep, narrow glass with water or beer and see if you can hear something like the second format in the vowels in these words as the glass fills up. All right, so that means the vowels should get higher in pitch or lower. If we're going from U to E, the vowels, the, the pitch should go higher or lower? Higher or lower? Higher, we're going to be hearing the front F2 pitch. So let's see if we can do it. All right. Um, Sophie, can you hold the microphone? Because I'm afraid it's not going to be that audible without one. And then you're going to have to stand to the side a bit. Let's hope I don't spill. If I spill, we'll just wipe it up. OK? If not too close, or I'm going to get it all wet. Okay. <laughs> did you hear it? What did you hear? The pitch is getting higher. We're getting from we're going from ooh all the way to i. Eh. Okay? Pretty cool, eh? Um, well, that was the experiment that Isaac did. He was really, really a brilliant scientist. Some people think he's one of the most brilliant scientists that ever lived. I read a biography of his. So you know, if you want to do some fun science reading, look into Isaac Newton. I'm also interested in color. That's another reason that I was so interested. But even as a little kid, you can see his curiosity started early. He was observing these things, and he was able to relate it to something else he observed, namely speech. So as that space gets smaller and smaller, you can hear the pitch get higher and higher. Okay? Good. Let's go on. Suprasegmentals. This is a whole new topic, and it's really, really important. And I've already actually given you a lot of rules of suprasegmentals. For example, when we talk about stress, and especially compound noun stress, which is such a big deal here because people don't teach it much, we're talking about suprasegmentals. So it means things aside from vowels and consonants like, for example, pitch or length or stress. All those things belong to suprasegmentals. Go ahead. Uh, Stanley. Vowels mm? and... Bao Ti. Oh, suprasegmentals. Supra. Suprasegmentals. Okay, and by the way, I belong to a group of pronunciation teachers over email. We're called supras. Make a group, they're supras, because we especially are interested in suprasegmentals. And it's, it's like a name of honor. Oh, here's a supra. Oh, I met another supra. Okay. <laughs> Supersegmentals, vowels and consonants can S consonants can be thought of as the segments of which speech is composed. 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 All right. Every sentence has meaning. So we've been describing speech mainly in terms of these two things. What are they? Consonants first. We usually say vowels and consonants, but we started talking about consonants first. So we're thinking of speech as a string of consonants and vowels, is that right? But, go on. To get together, they formed the... They form. They formed... No, the form yeah. The syllables that make up utterance. Utterances. Ut oh, utterances. Utterances. Right. Super... Uh, super imposed it. Mm? Superimposed on, superimposed on the syllables are other features known as supersegmentals. These include variations in stress, 
and pH. All right. Pay attention here because there is going to be a question on the test about what suprasegmentals are. to suprasegmental sisama. I can almost promise you there will be a question like this. Go on. Variation. I say ver. Variation in length. Length. Uh, length. There's a K in there. Length. Length. I'll explain it another day. Okay. Length. Mm -hmm. Are also usually con considered to be supersegmented features, although they can affect single segments as well as whole syllables. We will defer detailed. Defer mail duh, but uh, you read the nice. Uh, you read the stress correctly. De oh, we will defer mm -hmm. detailed description of description description of z, z yeah. or descriptions of the uh, the articulations. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, articulation. Mm -hmm. Articulation. Articulation. Good. And uh, and the corresponding acoustics of these aspects of speech till later. Later. In, later mm -hmm. in this book. Very nice. All right. In Chinese, vowels and consonants can be grouped together into a category called segments. Vowels and consonants belong to the bigger grouping of segments, okay? So keep that in mind. We need to know that. So segment vowels and consonants. So what are supersegmentals in Chinese? Those of you who know, say it. 超音段,就是超越的超,它超越音段的层次,到更高的层次是属于音调的层次。比方说长度啦,重音啦,等等,那些是属于超音段,supra-segmentals,它不是单单只属于一个字音,一个母音的一个特色,它是属于整个音节,整个字在句子里面,those are supra-segmentals. Um, I'm going to go over the rest just to save time, our time is about up, and we have to finish. Variations and stress are used in English to distinguish between a noun and verb, as in an insult, versus to insult. Everybody know that? You may need to give examples. An insult, 就是一个无助, versus to insult, 无辱人家, 那个是不同的重音哦. In Chinese, do you have something similar? 不同的声调能不能变成不同的词类? 能不能举例? 我最近在挂很多那个, 挂很多话在家里面, 我需要做什么? 钉钉子, is that right? 钉。which one's the verb? Ding. What's the noun? Ding. There you go. Or, 并不很多,也没有什么很大的系统,中文是用声调来区别词类,一样是工具,我们用一个电转来转动,电转来转动,so it doesn't mean that 四声一定是动词,这里四声就变名词了。So, keep in mind,就是声调,有时候可以区别词类,一样,重音, 英文里面的这个也不是说非常的universal,它就是有某一些字是刚好属于这个pattern. There are quite a few, 可是不是universal. Okay, mm, compare similar pairs such as a pervert. <laughs> Young people love to say this word, right? What is it? 变态, right. Okay, or to pervert. <laughs> An overflow, just一出来的东西 is overflow, <coughs> overflow. To overflow, just一出来这个动词. Uh, you should find that in the nouns, the stress is on the... Which syllable? These are all two-syllable words. If it's a noun, the stress tends to be on the first syllable, but in verbs on the last. So the stress can have a grammatical function in English. It can also be used for contrastive emphasis, as in, I want a red pen, not a black one. That's the third rule of intonation. The first rule, stress content words, don't stress, uh, don't stress uh, function words. The second rule is stress new information, don't stress old information. The third rule is stress contrasted elements. 这是第三个规则。
Stress in English is produced by one increased activity of the respiratory muscles, producing greater loudness. Stress is what? But there's one thing we know for sure, at least, Maybe I'm shouting, Okay, sorry, that wasn't very articulate. Two, exaggeration of consonant and vowel properties such as vowel height and stop aspiration. So stress is so stress is exaggera exaggeration of pitch. So low pitches are lower and high pitches are higher. Stress is For example, where are you going? Okay, where are you going? It's lower. All right, we're not going to have the test on Wednesday because we don't have time. We do, this happens all the time, as you can tell. We're going to have it next Monday. So we have to correct the exercises. Without correcting the exercises, I don't think you'll do as well on the test. So we're going to finish up the chapter, though. You can usually find where the stress occurs on a word by trying to tap with your finger in time with each syllable. It is much easier to tap on the stress syllable. Try saying abominable with tapping on the first syllable. All right, everybody get a pen, something you can tap with. And the word is abominable. Everybody say the word. Abominable. Now, don't think about where you're tapping. Say the word abominable and then just tap. Go. Abominable. Where do you tap? Which syllable? On bomb, because it's the stress syllable. Woman. Okay, try it again. Say abominable and tap. Go. Abominable. Because we're using more force to make a stress syllable. 肺更用力,你身体其他的地方 会感觉到,它是在,反正用力是全身的事情,不只是肺的事情. Now, try saying abominable, but tap on the first syllable. Everybody go. Abominable. Abominable. It's, it's harder, especially for a native speaker, because very naturally we'll go abominable instead of abominable. 好像违反自然,真的违反自然的事情. Try it. Can you do it? All right. Now try tapping on the third syllable, abomin. Try tapping on min, abominable. <laughs> All right? And so on. Okay, I've practiced. I can do it, but I practice. If you say the word in your normal way, you will find it's easiest to tap, to tap on the second syllable. Many people cannot tap on the first syllable without altering their normal, normal pronunciation. So if they try to tap on the first syllable, they'll say, abominable. They will change the stress because only the defunct is the stress. Pitch changes due to pitch changes due to variations in laryngeal activity can occur independently of stress changes. They are associated with the rate of vibration of the vocal folds. Earlier in the chapter, we call this we call this voice pitch to distinguish between the characteristics overtones characteristic overtones of vowels, vocal tract pitches, and the rate of vocal fold vibration. What they're talking about, Sunny, you so when they're talking about these, um, we, we need to distinguish between these. The pitch of the voice is what you alter to sing different notes in a song because each opening and closing of the vocal folds causes a peak of air pressure in the sound wave. We can estimate the pitch of a sound by observing the rate of occurrence of the peaks in the waveform. So we can see To be more exact, we can measure frequency of the frequency of the sound this way. Frequency, and we, we have a technical term for it, fundamental frequency. Remember? Fundamental frequency. It's a technical term for an acoustic property of a sound, namely the number of complete repetitions or cycles of a pattern of air pressure variation occurring in a sound. It's a 
，我们就用这个来计算 frequency 多少，频率多少。Everybody got that? Okay, I think it's pretty clear. The use of frequency measurement is the is in hertz, usually abbreviated as capital H Z. If the vocal folds make 220 complete opening and closing movements in a sound, we say that the frequency of the sound is. 220 hertz. By the way, 那个 and 不用，我们不讲 220. 那个 and 大家可以省略，以后就干脆省略 220 hertz. The frequency of the vowel a shown in、uh, figure 1.4 was 100 hertz as the vocal fold pulses occurred every 10 milliseconds. 10乘以一百是多少？十<笑>乘以一百多少？拜托拜托。一千对不对？我们是算千分之一秒，叫毫秒 （milliseconds）。中文是毫秒。Write it down, OK？ 毫不在乎的那个毫，就是一点点的意思。毫秒是千分之一秒。我们用毫秒来计算很多的 speech events， 一般都是用毫秒来计算。所以呢，每十毫秒有一次。的那个震动，那就是一千除以十等于一百，那就是一百赫。Okay, that's how it works. The pitch of a sound is an auditory property that enables a listener to place it on a scale going from low to high. 它的 pitch， 我们可以说这个频率比较低，这个频率比较高。可是呢，频率跟 pitch 比较不，呃，不是比较，是不一样的。Pitch 的中文是音高。考试也会考这个区别 ，pitch 是音高，这是我们的耳朵主观的感受。可是频率是一个物理的一个现象，那个是客观的还主观的？那是外外外在的世界的一个客观的一个现象，那个叫 frequency。客观的是 frequency， 主观的感受是 pitch， 不完全一样，是蛮接近，可是不完全一样。因为我们的耳朵有一些特色，会使我们听到不就是那个外面的速率可能会受到一点扭曲，会有 distortion， 因为我们的耳朵的构造的关系。All right. Um. So we're not talking about acoustics when we talk about pitch. We're talking about perception. Pitch is about perception of your ears. In practice, when a speech sound goes up in frequency, it also goes up in pitch. For the most part, at an introductory level of the subject, the pitch of the sound may be equated with its fundamental frequency. And indeed, some books do not distinguish between the two, and they use pitch for both the auditory property and the physical attribute. 他说很多书把 pitch 就画个等号，说 pitch 就等于 frequency， 可是其实不然，是有对应关系，可是不是百分之百一样。会有些差距。All right, the pitch pattern in a sentence is called intonation. All right, this is called either 句子音调 or 语调 All right, we're gonna have to finish before the bell.、Um, the variations in the pitch of the voice. When someone says the sentence, "This is my father," try to find out which syllable has the highest pitch and which the lowest. "This is my father." Which pitch? Which syllable has the highest pitch? Fa. Good. Which one has the lowest? It's not this. Listen, this is my father. This is my father. You got it. Okay. The last one. In most people's speech, the highest pitch will occur on the first syllable of father, and the lowest on the second, the last syllable of the second sentence. 就是重音后的最后一个音节没有重音哦 It's the lowest in this case. Now observe the pitch changes in the question. Is this your father? Is this your father? What's the lowest pitch? Is this your father? The lowest is is. The highest is er. In this sentence, the first syllable of fa is usually on a lower pitch than the last syllable. So fa is of course lower than er. Is this your father? Fa 当然是比 er 要低。刚好相反 ，because we're going up. 因为这是个 yes/no question. In English, it is even possible to change the meaning of a sentence, such as "That's a cat," from a statement to a question without altering the order of the words. "That's a cat." 这是你画的，根本就像个孔雀。你还说这是 cat? <laughs> okay. If you substitute a mainly rising for a mainly falling intonation, you will produce a question spoken with an air of astonishment. "That's a cat." 一点都不像。
And in French, that is often how they ask a question. C'est un livre. C'est un livre. So that's a question. It works in French. All the supersegmental features are characterized by the fact that they must be described in relation to other items in the same utterance. This is very important. Supersegmentals are relative. It's relative.相对的要看前面后面是什么，做个比较，才能说有关那个supersegmental的任何任何一句话。OK，都是相对的，看前面后面的高度、长度等等，做个比较之后才能。Okay? Make a statement. It's the relative values of pitch, length, or degree of stress of an item that are significant. You can stress one syllable as opposed to another, irrespective of whether you are shouting or talking softly. So, for example, abominable. Abominable. They're both stressed. But the loudness, absolute loudness, does not matter. It's the relative difference that matters. Children can also use the same intonation patterns as adults, although their voices have a higher pitch. 小朋友的那个音高,那个声音可能有百,就是265左右,265赫左右,会比大人要小蛮多。The absolute values are never linguistically important, 绝对值没什么关系, but they do of course convey information about the speaker's age, sex, emotional state, and attitude toward the topic under discussion. So, uh, if I talk like this, I sound pretty old, right? Sex, if you have a high voice, female, lower voice, male. Emotional state, get out of here. You know my emotional state. And attitude toward the topic. Oh, yeah, I heard about that before. Okay, we keep putting it off. We're going to have to hurry through the other chapters. I'm sorry. That's the way things go in this class. Make absolutely sure that your exercises are completely finished. Print it out on separate sheets. You can hand them in. And do the pinyin exercise. All right. And any questions? Okay, we're going to probably put some of the answers on the board, so be ready to draw pictures of the vocal tract. Very good. We will see you on Wednesday. <laughs>